discussed about uh, ethics and coming ethical. We said that law is about compliance. Do you understand compliance? Compliance means following rules. That's law. We make a rule and we follow it. Okay? We make a list of rules and we follow the rules. But can we make a rule for every situation and everything in life? No, we can't. So we need to have ethical behavior. Okay? Ethical is doing the right thing. Okay? Even though it might not be an exact rule that we have to follow, we have to choose to do the right thing. So the legal and the ethics is different. Okay? Legal is about compliance. Compliance means just doing what the rule says. But ethics is more than that, okay? So, we want to, in the business, if we're the manager, we want to create a business, a company, where people act in the ethical manner, okay? So we said we need to make a culture for the company, right? If we want to make an ethics, we need to make the culture, like good ethics culture, and we need to make a correct process. Do you understand process? Process is like system. Okay? So that's what we were talking about. <coughs> so the last time we finished by looking at some ethics vision statements. So, <coughs> and we finished here talking about the difference between compliance, legal compliance and ethics program. So, do you know the OECD? Do you know what does the OECD stand for? Anybody know? What does OECD stand for? Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Okay? Organ what? Mainly the developed countries are in the OECD. We have about 31 developed countries, right? Korea is a member of the OECD. So the OECD made, they make some guidelines or international standards. They make guidelines for multinational enterprises, okay? And they give their guideline on the quality of management system. How to make a quality management system. So, it's the same for any type of management, right? The same type of quality system, making a system to make sure we're managing properly. So, we also use this kind of idea for how to make the ethics program, okay? It's like quality management. Do you understand quality management? We can do quality management for the product to make sure that the product has no defect, okay? But we can also do product management for the people, or quality management for the people, to make sure the people are acting ethically, to make a process to check the people are acting ethically. So, so uh, this, the US has their own sentencing guidelines, which is about uh, <coughs> this they make some sentencing for white collar workers. Do you understand white collar workers? Like business people. Okay? And they also give some guideline about how to make this kind of quality management system. So we should have a connection between our organizational values and our ethical commitments and lawful conduct. So Large organizations should also encourage the small organization to make good compliance and ethics programs, even though they're in other countries. So this is just for making the system or making the process, right? 
Let's say that you're working for Nike and your supplier is in Pakistan and they are hiring 14 year old children to work to make the clothes. Okay? Let's say that's not illegal in Pakistan. Pakistan allows children, just for example, right? I don't know about Pakistani law, but let's say that it's legal in Pakistan for once you're over 14, you can work for the company. Okay? So, it could be in another country and another culture. Okay? But our company, it's big company Nike, we should encourage this supplier. Maybe they're making the shoelaces. Do you understand shoelaces? Do you understand shoelaces? Can you tie your shoelaces? Shoelaces on your shoes. Are you able to tie your shoelaces? Or does your mother do every morning? You do? How old were you when you learned to tie your shoelaces? 15? 7? Okay. So, let's say we're making the shoelaces company for Nike, okay? Then, Nike has to encourage that company to make some ethics program and compliance program, right? That company might say, well, we're complying with, we're complying with the law in Pakistan. Okay, the law says once you're over 14, you can work in the factory. Okay, but Nike should tell them, no, we, you, you need to make an ethics program. Okay, if you, you need to make an ethics program to make sure that the children are getting the right education. Okay, it's in line with our organization's ideas and values and common values that we should have. So, uh, that's one point we need to think about our suppliers and smaller companies okay so then we also have some suggestions for structure here so this by the way we can apply to ethics but we can also apply generally to management right if we study about management we can learn this as a type of quality system so firstly Leadership creates, this should say, an, an environment where stakeholders are involved in organizational change and provides a clear and inclusive vision of the company's future. So, first of all, we need the top people to provide a clear vision of the company's future. You understand vision? So if we don't have, if we don't know where we're going, it's going to be hard to get there, okay? So we need the people at the top to provide a clear vision. But when we're making a vision, do we make the vision by ourselves? Just say, I've got a vision, I know, I want to do this. Or do we talk to other people about the vision too, to help us to make the vision together? Yeah. Together, right? Well, are you more likely to work for somebody who has their own vision and they say, follow me? I have a vision. You understand vision? How do you say vision in Korean? Vision. So for example, I want to go to the moon, right? We want to fly to the moon. So I've got vision to fly to the moon, right? And then I just tell you, follow me, follow me, follow me, right? Or we all talk together and you guys said we decide together to go to the moon. Okay? Which one are you going to work harder? First one, second one, or it doesn't matter? Why? Huh? Helps your motivation, right? If you're involved and included in the decision making and the vision making. Okay? Uh, so, we need to include the stakeholders, okay? they're happier, included in the vision. We can ask them, workers in our company, about that too, right? How does that work in the real life? We don't go around asking everybody about their idea. What's your idea? What's your idea? Right? Let's, we have different departments. Let's say we have finance, marketing, 
Okay? Say we have 10 people in finance, 10 people in marketing. Okay? We have five people in HR. Okay? Just let's say a simple organization, right? Uh, then we we can get a representative of each of these areas. Do you understand representative, Dave Young? Okay? The representative can talk to these people. Right? They can ask them about different things and get to know them. They know what the people like and what they want. Right? They know what the people like and what they want. Then we have a meeting with all the representatives come together. Right? With the boss. Then I don't tell them this is what we have to do. Okay? I ask them, you know, what do the people think about what direction we want the company to go in and where we're going, right? And they tell me what the people think. And then they discuss together about that ideas, those ideas, right? With the boss. And then we make a plan. Then do we just do the plan? Or is there another step? What do you think? Just that's okay. Just do the plan now, or we should do something else. We should do something else. What else should we do? Anybody know? We check. Go back and check the plan. The representative shows the plan to them again, right? And then they say if they have a problem with the plan or not. Okay? Then they don't have. Probably they don't have a problem with the plan, or they want. They have a big problem with the plan. Then we need to start again. Okay? They have a big problem with the plan. Then clearly we didn't listen to them the first time. Okay? So we have to go back again and start again. Okay? And then we maybe make some small changes and then we have a plan. Okay? On the other hand, we could the boss could just tell them, like I said earlier, right? This is what this is where the company is going. This is what we're doing. Okay? This is what I say, so do what I say. If you don't like it, just go away. Right? So, usually, people, when they feel included, they feel happier, okay? And they're more likely to be more motivated in that case. So, we want to make this kind of vision together, okay? Then, goals are best achieved when persons and resources are managed within clearly established organizational processes. So, uh, processes are part of a management system, overall system. We have a commitment to continual improvement, we'll talk about it in a minute. And also, we'll talk about this in a minute too. Plan, do, measure, improvement cycle. And later we'll also talk about types of leadership, <coughs> different types of leadership. Okay, so. In the ethics program, we make our vision, we plan and document our objectives and our expectations for the people. We make uh, responsible, accountable process and system oriented actions. So this is just, this is a kind of a general approach for management systems, right? This is specifically for the program, ethics program. Okay, so translating that into ethics program. Uh, do you understand responsible and accountable? What does it mean, responsible and accountable? Are you responsible? Hmm? Yes? What are you accountable for? What kind of things are you accountable for as a student? Projects, study, right, coming to the class, that kind of thing, taking part in the class. Okay? If you don't do your project, then you're accountable, you get a lower grade. Okay? So uh, we have to make people responsible and accountable. It's important generally in management. If we don't make people responsible and accountable, it may be that they don't do what they're supposed to do. Okay? So I think I explained before, uh, at some summer camp, some child was in trouble in the swimming pool, but nobody was responsible or accountable specifically one for watching the swimming pool. There were two teachers, 
and neither teacher was going to help the child, okay? Because they weren't made responsible or accountable. One of them wasn't made responsible or accountable, okay? So we have to make people responsible and accountable, otherwise they might say, I don't have to do that, right? You do that, not me. I'm not responsible, I'm not accountable for that. And then we can have problems. So especially in ethics, that's also an ethical problem, right? The teacher should help the student, okay? If they're in the swimming pool, having problems. So we need to make people accountable. We need to have some way of measuring and assessing the ethics program. Is it working or not, okay? So we can try to measure like how many times in the year did we get some complaints about discrimination? So how many complaints did we get? That kind of thing. And we can assess, are we doing better or worse than before? And then, a systematic commitment means like continually trying to improve uh, our systems. We'll talk about in continual improvement. So let's start with the documentation. So it sounds very simple, documentation is not that exciting, but actually when I worked in my last job, uh, I was working with, before in Ireland, with some 70 volunteers who were dealing with children, right? So actually the, the organization didn't have a code of ethics, so me and my co-worker had to make a code of ethics for the workers, so we had to make the documents, okay? How do you go about making the documents of the code and ethics? Usually you look at the best practice. Best practice of the other companies. Okay? Uh, what is the, do you understand best practice? Like benchmarking? Best practice means what is being done at the moment. Okay? That's the best. Benchmarking is looking at other companies, okay? So basically you have to do some research and look into best practice in ethics means these days what are people doing in ethics, okay? There are usually some documents and advice. Best practice, often the NGOs can help. You have some NGOs, right? In the US they have like NGOs about the ethical area, okay? They can help when you're drawing up best practice. Okay? They have documents in other areas. Benchmarking. Somebody else is in a similar business. Same kind of business, right? What about them? What does their code of ethics say? What kind of code of ethics do they have? Okay? So looking at your competitors. So we can use these together and we make a code of ethics. Our, of course, our business might be different than the other business. So we have to think what do we need to put into the code of ethics. So an example of something in the Code of Ethics that we made out is you're not allowed to touch the children, okay? Do you understand? You can't touch the children. Another problem is that sometimes the parents are in the car with the children. Not the parents, but the coach. Coach is alone with the child in the car. Now that was okay 20 years ago, right? But nowadays that's not best practice. The adults shouldn't be alone with the child any time, okay? If they're not the parents, they're not the parent of the child, they shouldn't be alone with them. So if they go in the car, you should have at least two children, or at least two adults in the car, okay? So it's important to write that kind of thing down for the volunteers, okay? Because later if there's a problem, then the volunteer knows, like, oh, I can't do that, right? Maybe before they think, should I do that or shouldn't do that? Or they don't think about it. Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? I'm not sure, right? But if we write down the code, specific problems we can have in our work, ethical problems, then it's clearer for them. Okay? So, uh, also this helps the company. If you have a worker who does something against your code of ethics, you can say, look, it was, our company made the code, it's written down that they should behave like this or they should do this. But they, they didn't follow the code of ethics. So we have to admit that just we hired the wrong person and we fired them and now the problem is solved. Okay? 
But if we don't have the code of ethics, they might think, well, maybe your company was encouraging people to do that kind of activity. So we can also help get help from our stakeholders. So we can talk to the volunteers, right? What do you think is appropriate to do when you're coaching the children? Okay, they're coaching the children's sports, right? Uh, usually their own children, playing soccer, that kind of thing. So they might say, yes, we think it's not appropriate to touch the children, right? Or yes, we think it's not appropriate to go in the car, just one child and a strange adult, okay? So we can put all of those things down together. Every business has a different code of ethics. If you're in advertising, it's going to be different than dealing with children, okay? Advertising, it's going to be things about, you know, can I say we're the best company in the world? What can I say? What can't I say? Okay? Those kind of things. <clears throat> so, we give our employees the code of ethics. Also, code of ethics should be included when they are, when they are getting any other documentation. For example, we talked about at the start of the course the mortgages and the mortgage crisis. So we give the employee gets the information like directions how to make a mortgage, right? So they have the steps, right? Number one, check the background of the of the person, right? Follow the steps. You work for the bank, okay? You're deciding to give a mortgage. Check their background, check their job, blah, 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 okay? Included with this, we, have, we should include the code of ethics, okay? What do you think? Just discuss with your partner. What do you think if we are working in the mor selling the mortgage to people, right? So you come to my bank and I'm giving you a mortgage, which is a loan to buy an apartment or a house. Okay? What are you going to write in the Code of Ethics? Just one thing. Discuss with your partner. One thing you would write in the Code of Ethics. Maybe something that could have helped the mortgage, subprime mortgage crisis in the US if the people had done this. Right? So think about that and discuss with your partner. What would you include in the Code of Ethics? Yes, for employees, you're the boss. And you're giving your employee the book. <laughs> book. This is how to make a mortgage, right? These are the things you need to do. And you're also giving them a, do a page which is the code of ethics. Okay? What are you going to write on the code of ethics for, for them? Legal can be included in the list, right? That's compliance. Okay? Like, fraud is illegal, so you cannot write down the wrong information, right? But ethical is just you shouldn't do. Okay? Like we explained about, it's not illegal in the case with the kids, it's not illegal to be in the car at the same time with one child. Is that illegal? No, but it's just something you shouldn't do. Okay? Why not? Because uh, sometimes the child can make some lie or allegation about the adult. The adult did something to me, right? There's nobody there to find out. So the adult is also protecting themselves, right? So anyway, they should, 
the child is like in a vulnerable situation too. So because of those reasons, it's not right, it's not illegal, but it just doesn't seem like the right thing to do. Okay? So just remember it's similar for this one, right? So have you found out something? Have you decided something with your partner? You're going to write here for making mortgages. Do you want another minute? Yeah, so take another minute to discuss what's what's going to be the right behavior. Not illegal, but you know, something that the person should do. Real estate? Yes. Yeah. They like make a big money, amount of money to mm -hmm. the bank, right? Yes. So like check every semester that they are like, having violence. Okay, so uh, the person comes into you for a loan, right? Yeah. So you mean check the house value properly? Yeah. So the mortgage the person who's doing the making the mortgage, right? So don't exaggerate the house price. Okay? So you're going to get the house price appraised. You're going to call somebody, right, to appraise. You understand appraise means value the house. So you shouldn't exaggerate the house price. Okay? That's a good point. Okay? Anybody else? Any other ideas to put in the in the code of conduct? Code of conduct here. So you get the house appraised, and they say that make a real appraisal of what the house is worth. Okay, so you don't give them too much money to buy the house. Anybody else? We can do the same for their income. Don't exaggerate the person's income. Right? So the person tells you, oh, I'm just earning $30,000 a year. Okay? You don't have to ask them, well, are you doing any other job? And they say, well, sometimes I do a part time job and I get $100 now and again. Sometimes. Then you don't exaggerate. You can say, okay, I'll write down you get $100 every day. Right? From your part-time job. Okay, so don't exaggerate the income, don't exaggerate the things, right? Do exactly. So let's have a look at this code of ethics for sales and marketing. So this is like a pledge. They say, do you understand pledge? 
pledges you say that you will do something or won't do something. So, uh, I pledge to protect, support and promote the principles of consumer choice, competition, innovation. Okay. I will not participate in actions, agreements or marketing policies which may be detrimental to customers or competitors or community, social, or economic policies or standards. So, uh, there was a, sca a scandal in this crisis too, where an investment bank knew that the real estate prices were going to go down, okay? But, they marketed the real estate fund to their customers, like, oh, this is a really good investment, okay? So they told their customers it was a good investment. They were marketing, right? So that would be against this one. Okay, so uh, it's detrimental means it's harm, harming. Okay, if you do the marketing of something that's going to harm the customer, like you suggest buy this investment, but you know the investment is going to be, you think, right? You're pretty sure the, it's going to be very bad investment. Is that ethical? To tell the customer this is a good investment when you think it's a bad investment? What do you think? Is that okay? No, no right? So, I believe prices should reflect the true value in the use of the product or service. So, I'm not going to give oh, too much overpricing to the customers, okay? Uh, here they talk about customers right for safe products and clear instructions okay so we mentioned about even fundamental rights we can put into the code of ethics so we need to make sure beyond the law that our product is very safe okay investigate the customer dissatisfaction and take prompt action so if the customer is not happy investigate and do something quickly okay not slowly so these are, you know, sometimes they get people to sign this kind of thing, right? It can be used, this is just a generic one which could be used for a com any company, right? Like I said, we can find a lot of information about best practice for ethics code of conduct if you're involved in sales or marketing. So on the code of conduct, we should write these things. We should say the CEO or the top part of the company is committed to promoting ethics. We should clearly say the duties and obligations, highlighting fundamental rights, special obligations, and legal compliance. So in our, the code of ethics I made, the children, we have, they had a special obligation for the children, okay? So children had some special obligation. In the one we just looked at there, they talked about the fundamental rights of health and safety. So we include those things. We sp specifically relate it to the job function. And we can use examples of how to solve common issues. Okay? So a common issue for the mortgage company, people lie about their income when they want to get a loan. Okay? What do you think we can do in that case? I'm working in the bank. Every day I see 10 people looking for a mortgage. Uh, about three of those people, or four of those people, are going to lie about their income. So what should I do? Just accept their, what they tell me? Or what, what should I do? Hmm? How should I solve this common problem in, in, the, in the bank? People come in, they tell me they're earning more money than they are. So what should I do to solve this problem? Ask them to read the paper. What paper? Like, tax, because like, hmm. as much as like, get earn the money from the company, mm -hmm. you need to pay a tax as a percentage. Okay. So if we bring the tax paper, then we can figure out how much we can take in there. Yes, okay, so that's a good suggestion. So some people might bring in the letter from their work, right? I even knew a guy before, he got his boss to sign a letter to say he earned more money than he did, right? Because his, he knew his boss and his boss was helping him to get a mortgage, okay? But if you use the tax form, how much money he actually paid in tax, then it's more accurate, okay? We can figure out that 
person is getting paid the right amount. So we give examples on the Ed Code of Ethics, okay? So make sure to check the tax documentation for the, about their income, okay? If you're, if you're not sure about their income. So do you think you would be able to make out Ethics Code of Conduct if you work in a company? They don't have Ethics Code of Conduct. Would you be able to make one? Hmm? Would you be able to write one? This one wasn't very long, just one page. Maybe the one we made in our work was, you know, uh, you want people to read it, so you don't want to make it too long, right? But, you know, about three or four pages anyway. Do you think you would be able to make that? Code of conduct for a job, specific job or a company? Yes or no? Hmm? Why not? Just you have to talk to the people, right? Talk to the stakeholders, okay? Do some research, find the best practice in the industry, right? Go online, talk to the NGO. The NGOs, even the website of the NGO can give you the information, right? And then write it out, check it with the stakeholders, then it's okay. You're not able to do that? Hmm? What do you think? Maybe? Maybe you can do that? Okay, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to do that. Do you have any question about this uh, ethics code of conduct? No? Uh, also we need to be clear about what happens if somebody doesn't follow the code of ethics. Okay? We can also have a direction to an ethics officer. If we're a big company, we can have an ethics officer. It doesn't have to be full-time. They don't have to be in a full-time role. Okay? They can just be like, uh, almost like voluntary. Or they could be full-time. Or they could be part-time, getting paid some extra money, also to be the ethics officer. Okay? We can reference where did we get our ethics code of conduct from. So, uh, the vision statement, of course, we need to make a document on our vision statement. So, the last time we talked about the vision, we looked at this website briefly for Texas Instruments. So we can see these company, uh, they have here their core values. Even down here we can see code of conducts and ethics, code of conduct and code of ethics. Right? Here they have on their website, uh, their core values. So we saw already integrity, innovation, commitment. Uh, citizenship, STEM education, diversity and inclusion. So we stay, we uh, start off by saying that long term success is linked to the ethical and legal conduct. So we should have some sentence like explaining that the long term success of the company is linked to ethical conduct. We should say the importance of the stakeholders. Okay, so for example, uh, our customers are important stakeholders and we want to make the product very safe for them. We should give our character traits. What character traits does our company want? Okay, we want honesty, for example. We should say that we promote an ethics program Okay, and we can say that we have a code of conduct or a code of ethics. So, the vision statement doesn't have to be that long, it can't just be one paragraph. Okay, tells our uh, customers, our stakeholders that they're important to us, they're important for the long term success, lists our values, the values that we want in our company, and 
uh, references the supporting document. So just discuss with your partner what kind of character traits, if you were starting your own company, what kind of character traits would you like people to have who work in your company? So you, if you make a vision statement for your company, just discuss briefly, just imagine that you start a company. Right? What kind of company is it? What kind of vision statements would you have? What kind of character traits would you include in your vision statement? Then use the dictionary if you want. Neighbor, you have a neighbor dictionary on your phone, right? You may need to use the dictionary. Then. What kind of people do you want to work with? What words do you want to describe the company that you want to have? You can choose just three values or uh, character traits, right? This, this company chooses integrity, innovation, commitment. Okay, down below it has more specific, right? These are the, the headlines. So, what three things would you choose for your company to put in your vision statement? We looked at BT and T values, they had 10, slightly more for BT and T, and Aristotle. We looked at Aristotle's values too, right? Some values lists that Aristotle had. So just decide on three with your group or your partner, what three character traits would you choose? you choose for your vision statement? Collaboration. Yeah. Over our first. Okay, anything 
something else. La labor is work, right? Collaboration, work together. High quality. High quality. Okay, so did, did you take that from Apple? You're the same as Apple? Your company is going to have the same values as Apple? You guys were going to make a company together, right? Yes. So you're going to use the same values as Apple? That's okay, you found out the ones from Apple, right? Uh, ho he mu, what about you? What character traits would you like in the company? Polite. Polite. Mm -hmm. Honest. Enthusiastic, interested. We well, can understand that you know the company has their traits, right? Vision. Then the HR manager is trained. Look for people with these traits. Okay. So you tell the let's say you make your own company. You tell the HR manager, I want you to hire people who are polite and honest and interested. Okay. So the HR manager goes to the interview and they see the person and they say, oh, that person is polite and honest and interested. Let's hire them, okay? And they can prove that they're uh, honest, right? They already worked in a responsible job, for example. They have some proof. So it's a, like I said, that's an interview tip, okay? When you do an interview, check the character traits of the company, their vision statement or their ethics vision statement, okay? And try to match them with your experience to show that you have those things, right? So, uh, <clears throat> do you think you would be able to write a vision statement? You go to the company, they don't have any code of conduct, they don't have any ethics vision statement. Would you be able to organize and write an ethics vision statement? It's just one paragraph? Yes. Yes, right? Just follow the steps. Okay, just our long-term success is linked to the ethical and legal behavior, right? We think our stakeholders are very important, so we make very good quality product for them, okay? Then we have these core values. They often call, we can see on the website listed as core values. Core means very important, important values. Core is just a shorter way to write important. You know the apple? The core is the very center of the apple. Do you eat the core in the apple? Sorry? Do you eat the core of the apple? No. Why not? No taste. It's not good, right? Bad for you. Okay? So core just means in the center are very important. <laughs> okay? So this company has quite a strong a long list of things that they, and the website, you can also make the website like this, of course, uh, so people can click, like, let's say we click on citizenship, and they have, you know, a section on the website about citizenship, community, sustainability. Do you want to work for this company? Hmm? Maybe, right? It also helps to attract employees and retain employees. If your company does those kind of things properly, you can attract the better human resources and retain them. So then let's take a break now for 10 minutes.